Hello everybody, what's going on? Welcome to a new commentary playthrough. Uh, I'm gonna be playing Outland, which is a game available on the PlayStation 3. Well, I'm playing the PlayStation 3 version. I'm not so sure if there is a PC. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there is. Anyway, this is a platformer, action platformer game uh, developed by Ubisoft, released in 2011. Um, actually, I... I got this game a while ago. Never took the time to play it through. I played a big part of it, so it's semi-blind, put it that way. So, uh... I don't know, it looks like a very generic 2D platformer. These sort of games is very common to see collectibles. As you can see, I already played almost two hours of it. <clears throat> but I am starting a new file. I guess at some point of the game it will be blind. If you listen, I will tell you of a man lost in his world, haunted by dreams of legend. Medicine could not help him. Visions drove him on. A shaman, he sought. A teacher and a mystic. The Pal Kaaba, who could make sense of these visions. Who would heal him. He found the seer, collapsed at his fireside, and listened as he was told the ancient truth. Stories of a great wheel endlessly turning. Of two sisters who helped make the world. And then sought to shatter it. Imprisoned by a hero, a soul waiting through the ages, eager to be reborn. His time has come again, but so has theirs, and the earth trembles in fear. So it's basically a fantasy story about the world creation. Is that the shaman they were referring to? And that guy over there is our hero. So yeah, as you can see, 2D platforming. Those hearts are... The, the hits that you can take, your health. Wall jump. Hanging on ledges. Yeah, this can <laughs> remind you of Rayman even, in a way. Because you get new abilities as you make progress, just like in that game. Well, it's Ubisoft. I mean, it's not something unique to Rayman or Ubisoft, specifically. It happens in a lot of games that you have to be gaining abilities as you make progress. Those are... Bad balls. Bad blue balls. And these are collectibles. I mean, you can consider this the tutorial mission. That's the checkpoints. Guiding lights. It's a little flies or whatever they are. Actually, they indicate where you have to go next. And just press a switch that opens... This is uh, a close passage. And I'm taking hits. You start with three hearts. You can get more, of course, as you go through. Wait, I'm backtracking. Yeah. I don't know, from the two hours I played, the game in general looks very straightforward. I thought at first that I needed to deal with a lot of 
puzzles. I cannot attack. I have an attack, a melee ability that I still have to get later. Tuhu bullets. It will be a lot of Tuhu looking bullet patterns. It's kind of funny to think about it. That's a melee attack. Can attack him from ladders as well. I can do an uppercut move. He uses a sort of sword and yeah, that one. And while crouching as well. <clears throat> now you can break these things and get money as well as health. You will need the money basically to get upgrades. To increase your health. Among other things, we will be discovering as we go through, obviously. I know the flies are indicating one way, but sometimes you need to take a look at another path, basically for secrets, if you are interested in them. Not necessarily for the collectibles, but are mostly interested in getting a lot of money and health, of course, if necessary. There's a lot of hearts in the levels that come from enemies as well, as you can see. And if you destroy the hearts, for example, if you have full health already, if you hit the hearts two or three times, you get even more money out of the hearts. So every pickup has a use, in other words. Okay. Now for a real level, I guess. Yeah, of course. I would prefer to uppercut these guys, even if I can just go get past them. See? I can break the health pickups. In case I already have full health, obviously. I mean, you can still destroy them if you don't have full health, but obviously it is recommended to do it. Uh, the use of that item out there, that collectible, I cannot get it yet because I don't have the slide ability. Very Mega Man-ish. Yeah, I forgot to break that heart. Could have gotten more money out of it. I have 407, 4,700. Usually one of these health upgrades costs like 20,000 <laughs> dollars. I don't know what they are. Now I have this light ability. Don't plus X plus jump in this case. I insist, a lot of these bullet patterns will remind you a lot of these Tuhu games. Tuhu games, in case you didn't know, or for the ones who don't know, are these Japanese bullet hell shoot em ups. Now I can slide. Well, I'm expected to slide there. I came in those hearts there until now. Just wanted to make sure I kill all enemies. Without receiving a hit, I mean. Alright, this looks a little bit tough. Because you have to wait for the bullet pattern to go away. Or the bullets themselves, sorry, to go away so you can climb the platform. 
You hit the switch, and now you can move on. I mean, it would be a confusing puzzle game if I didn't know where to go next, but this flies actually... You need a launch pad. Skill required to use the launch pad. But yeah, as I was saying, these little flies or magical things flying... Um, take you to the next location. And of course, whenever there is an item that you need to get, you will have to pick it up and then those flies precisely will take you to the necessary place, so you shouldn't get lost in this game. So that's why it's so far it hasn't been confusing to me at all. Okay, this is a little journey to the past. It will be explained now. 30,000 years ago. Fall back through time. Become the ancient hero. Let his spirits, dark and light, arm you in this final battle. So basically, in this section, you have full power in terms of health upgrades, and you can change to the two different spirits, light, the blue, and darkness, which is the red. You clearly have more power. Oh yeah, this is a journey to the past. And as you can see, you can ride these color platforms according to the color of the spirit you are using. You are immune to the corresponding bullet colors according to the spirit you are using. And only the light spirit, basically the blue guy, can kill the red enemies and the other way around. It's basically how it works. So yeah, you need you need to fuck around with this thing. Like changing to the corresponding color. And change these abilities emitter. I still consider this pretty much a tutorial, but you have to do a lot of this during the game. A lot of switching in a single area. I didn't see the spikes. Oh yeah, you cannot kill enemies of the same color as you. You have to switch to the opposite one. And you need to backtrack all the way. Here switching is important. Might be missing a secret by not going down there, but well. Okay everybody, that's all for the time being. I'll see you in the next part. Thanks for watching.